Thanks for coming this morning to our second day. Um, to our third panel discussion with the title Collaboration between Architecture, Education and Non-Academic Partners. And uh, for this, um, we have Hank Oving here, who will moderate uh, this panel. And I'd like to introduce uh, Hank uh, for you who don't know Hank yet. Um, he is the, sorry. Yeah, we have an image, great. There he is. Hank is a senior advisor and chair of the Hurricane Sandy Rebuilding Task Force, Secretary of Housing and Urban Development in Washington, D.C. in the U.S. Hank Oving is concerned with the relationship between design and politics. He was responsible for the development of the new Dutch spatial planning policy and has established the research and development agenda on spatial pl planning for the Netherlands. He was a co-curator for the fifth International Architecture Biennale in Rotterdam, entitled Making City. He regularly uh, teaches, lectures, and writes on new ways of planning, the position of politics and design, and the exchange between governance and planning. We all know Hank here at the NCB for his really challenging events. Um, here at the NCB during the uh, debates, design and politics. And I know there are already new plans for new projects here. And um, I know there's something in regards of post-catastrophe planning on the way. Thank you, Hank, for taking this job. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dietmar. Um, Thank you, Christine. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Vielen Dank. Schon wieder. Uh, thank you, Hans Jürgen. It's gone. He's gone. <laughs> ah, there he is. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Hitoshi, for inviting me over. Um, I like your uh, starting sentence, uh, Hans Jürgen. The space between. That's what we're going to do uh, this morning. We're only going to talk about the space between academics and the real world, uh, government and politics, uh, and try to focus on what this means in a collaborative sense, in, an, in a more governance or organizational sense, and what it would actually mean for ec educational practice. What says here is that you shouldn't you know, actually listen to me. Uh, because um, uh, Sigrid Gideon, you all know better than I. I'm not an architect. I'm my father, grandfather, and great-grandfather were architects. I thought that was enough. Um, so I uh, studied mathematics, uh, went into politics, and now I, uh, after the Dutch government, I went to the US government. Uh, my world changed in five months. Um, and um, Mr. Gideon didn't really think highly of us, uh, which is good. So let's talk about the space in between. Uh, and we can only talk about this uh, organizational capacity that's outside of our academic and outside of the government and outside of the uh, uh, private partners and outside of our design offices as a collaborative space if we focus on the issues at stake. And the, the question, you know, we're here for architecture and I think a little broader sense architecture, so urban design, landscape architecture, the way we design uh, in that sense have an influence on the spatial issues. Well, everything has a spatial impact. Um, economic, social, cultural, ecological, and this spatial inter impact and the inter interdependency and interaction between these issues in the spatial domain makes design and planning so valuable. Makes it actually that there's a lot at stake. And yesterday I was a little worried because you're all so worried um, about your practice. You're also almost afraid about reality and saying, well, it's architecture, but do we matter? Yeah, you do. And in the outside world where I am, there's no question about it. So I think the perception of does architecture matter is a, well, it's more an, an internal perception than an external perception. So let's get rid of it and go out and start, start practicing. Uh, there's a lot to do. Um, and this, this lot to do, uh, also comes for that 
we can talk about climate change and poverty and uh, social in in inequality. We could talk about economic default or demographic changes. The world is, you know, scary and dangerous and terrible and disastrous. Uh, and these are these very generic, very big issues. But the impact of all these very generic and very uh, uh, big uh, issues is everywhere different. And the interaction between all these big issues on every place in the world is different. Although there are generic conclusions to take, uh, the impact of a storm like Sandy on the New York, uh, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Rhode Island shore is very different when you compare the tip of Manhattan with Seabride in New Jersey, for instance. Uh, on all levels, that's different. Well, we talked about this yesterday, uh, that you look to the past and that you almost only are there and that today only matters for a politician or an architect. But there has to be a way to move to the future. So the, I use this image always for a political debate because politics is only reactionary in the middle era. Uh, only facing and confront, com confronting the issues now, and we have to try to move them ahead uh, and make them remember. But I think if you, if you talk about the architecture school or uh, 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 academia, it's a, it's a way how you move as a school on this weird arrow. Uh, so can we actually move the school around uh, 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 through time and actually place it in the future to look back? Well, Joachim, talked about the disconnect. Uh, I want to focus out of this disconnect on the alliance, the collaboration uh, in the in-between. And um, it's the intermediate space that actually makes it valuable to collaborate. It's the space between, in this sense, the house and the outside world that you can work on and in and start an alliance and collaborate. It's also an escape of the formal. Uh, in, in my world, in the political world, the formal is all about rules and regulations and policies. Uh, the formal is uh, about power. Uh, the formal is about uh, uh, structure. And the outside world acts the same. So I did a design competition, and the first thing the design firm say, what's the structure? And I said, well, you can help me design it. No, no, no. Tell us what to do. I said, tell us what to do, you're sure? Yeah. And these were the, you know, the, the best firms of the world. So structure is, a, a, is an asset for everything, but if we can create a void room for collaboration, we can define our own structures. If we create this intermediate, this possibility of collaboration, this informal space, we can actually change the formal. There is a way. And then design, collaboration, and education, research, uh, and uh, a process of alliances actually can become like a Trojan horse. So you step outside of the real world, step outside of the formal uh, uh, positions, uh, and try not only the issues at stake and de define the solutions and work on them, but you also f uh, 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 change formal actors and formal positions. So this, tomorrow we're going to talk about alliances, a way of collaboration. Uh, and most of the times an alliance is formed, this is a, uh, um, uh, um, a description from a more scientific point of view, that there's people aligned in an alliance that set aside all differences because they want to focus on one goal. Um, we did this. Uh, I'm almost done and I'll introduce speakers, don't worry. Um, this is Sandy uh, after this New York after the Hurricane Sandy. Uh, electricity power was off except for Battery Park. Um, and we started Rebuild by Design. And why did we start Rebuild by Design? And why did I develop it in such a way? Uh, the region is complex. All interdependencies in this region are, are big. The situation for New York is thus that the city of New York is totally dependent on New Jersey uh, when it comes to waste, electricity, infrastructure. Um, but the political system of New Jersey is fragmented, totally, and Republican. Uh, so now the mayor of New York has been, you know, we got elections in November, uh, but when it comes to a hurricane, the only dependency he has is Chris Christie. So, um, 
for a city of New York with so, so many dollars and there's no negotiative power between those states, uh, the regional scale becomes more important. So we said the region is complex, it's big, Sandy showed it again, interdependencies on infrastructure, ecology, energy, democ demography and economy are all on this regional scale, so let's start with a research and not with a question. We don't know where to focus on when we would deliver a design competition. And most of the times the questions are policy or politically defined, but we want them to be design driven. So we put up a design competition to do the research. Uh, we got 10 teams, they all collaborate now. Uh, I have 150 people, it's like a faculty of the best school for resilience by design. And within these 10 teams, there are 12 universities and schools of architecture. So every team is about five to 10 organizations. Uh, um, so uh, these faculties are out there. And they're not only from the US, they're from all over the world. So in a sense, the faculties and these teams already stepped out of the formal and trying to practice uh, and research uh, resiliency by design. I show it as an example, as a possibility where the world as a laboratory that you know, can confront everything, uh, we should more exploit this case. So, Michael speaks. Welcome. Good that you're here. Now I have to put on my glasses. <coughs> Michael is, is not only a good friend, former dean of uh, uh, School of Design, University of Kentucky, um, gave, well, indirectly uh, me the key to the city of Henderson. Uh, and made me Kentucky Colonel. Yeah, it's, those are all the weird, the weird things that happen in life when you work with Michael. Um, and we have to talk about Peppy Van Winkle later today, but that's a different thing. Michael has played a key role in recent debates about alternative models of city planning. He was project coordinator for the 2012 East Region session of the Mayor's Institute on City Design, an, an initiative in which mayors engage leading design experts to find solutions to the most critical urban design challenges facing their cities. He was also behind the River Project in Kentucky, connecting many different players to empower the redevelopment of Ohio River cities. And he did this as dean of a school of design, so not as a consultant, uh, but as uh, uh, almost a public official in his role as dean. He's now dean of the School of Architecture at Syracuse University in Syracuse. Welcome. Anton Falkeis, there you are. Um, we met in the elevator this morning again and I said, Anton, how are you? And he said, well, I ran into someone last night. Uh, everything went well. Uh, he had coffee, he's there. He's head of the department social design, University of Applied Art in Vienna. And as leader of the master's program in social design, Anton is concerned with the role of the arts in urban innovation. The program works with non-academic institutions aiming to integrate diverse disciplinary expertise <laughs> when dealing with the complexity of urban systems. Art in synergy with scientific methods and knowledge is seen as a tool for spatial and social innovation in a rapidly urbanizing world. Alongside his academic work, Anton is the co-founder of Falkeis Architects based in Vienna and Vaduz. Welcome Anton, nice to meet you. And then Alejandro, there you are. Alejandro Restepo Montoya, uh, he's professor of the Faculty of Architecture, Pontificia University Bolivariana in Medellin. And Alejandro is a university professor and researcher in the areas of architecture and sustainability. Alejandro just, he flew in in the last minute. I'm very happy that you could actually join us uh, for this debate. We met briefly yesterday and, and talked about your experience. Um, he, will, he has developed urban and architectural projects in the recent context of urban transformation in Medellin and has received international and national awards in recognition of his architectural work. He has lectured internationally and is currently pursuing doctor studies at the Technical University of Munich. But Anto is very much involved in the collaboration with the university and the outside world. So it's, it's, it's profession and the projects that drives actually the collaboration. And then our last uh, speaker, Xu Wai Gyu. Where's Q? Ah, there you are. Yeah. It's so dark from here, it's weird. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Xu is professor of School of Architecture in Tsinghua University, Beijing. Xu's research includes work on the subject of design methodology and large scale planning. 
He has been involved in funded research projects, including research on spatially optimization of Tianmen Square and theory and methodology of architectural planning. As well as his academic role, he is also principal of XWG Argi Studio in Beijing, a research-based practice that aims to investigate and reflect the socio-economic and ecological problems in the process of rapid urbanization in China. And it's again this collaborative force for Xu that we're going to talk about. Um, so I'd like to invite Michael to the stage and to give your five to six, seven minute presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks, Hank. I'm going to go uh, quickly. I'm going to talk about uh, one one project. Um, I arrived at uh, University of Kentucky uh, College of Design in uh, 2008, just as the economy crashed. Um, it's a very poor state. Uh, it's a very poor university. Um, and uh, one of the things that we got involved with immediately was the uh, US Department of Energy's uh, solar decathlon competition. We entered, uh, we were, uh, and were invited as one of the 20 in 2009, and um, we placed ninth overall. Uh, it was fantastic for us because we had never entered before, and it was, a, it was an incredible opportunity uh, to work with a lot of the other colleges at the university. But one of the things that you do when you do a solar decathlon house is you have to raise a lot of money. We, we spent about $800,000 on a 1,000 square foot off the grid house. Um, in a state uh, that has uh, really pretty shocking poverty, uh, the question for us was what do you do with a $1 million thousand square foot house uh, in a state uh, that has enormous poverty and where many, many people live in house trailers, not house boats, but house trailers. Um, so, uh, so we won this competition and, and it, it, uh, I'm going to talk very quickly, but the, this project is about, uh, it, it, it stands on three legs, economic development, uh, job creation um, and uh, the development of a new energy efficient uh, product. Um, uh, it's also about, uh, about applied research, how you transform, uh, let's say, a, a million dollar research project that's conducted by five or six colleges into a single project that actually has an impact on the state. So I'll go quickly. I thought I would start uh, by showing actual students. Uh, we haven't seen many of those in presentations so far. Um, these are real students working on a real project. They're actually working on a solar decathlon competition. Um, uh, we've also heard a lot about uh, design and, and the object is not that important and uh, the process is, is, is important for us. Uh, it, w it was great that we were ninth overall, but the, the design we, could care we weren't that interested in. What was more important was the knowledge that was generated in the production of the, um, of the, uh, of the house itself. So I'm going to go quickly. Uh, we placed uh, ninth overall. Uh, we have a very popular basketball team, uh, and, uh, and, and it's the only category that we placed in the top two. We have a very famous basketball coach. He asked everyone to, on Twitter to vote for us. Even with the power of our basketball coach, we could only get to number two. But still, we got to number two. Um, in any case, uh, we did a house. It's fine. It was uh, $800,000. There's nothing special except that we did it. Um, more students. These are some of the students uh, who worked on the project. This is it. Um, after, after it finished, it came back. It served as, a, as an information booth briefly, uh, briefly for uh, the World Equestrian Games, and then we decided to do something else. We, we got an honorable mention. Immediately we, were, uh, we said, so what do you do with this? Uh, we started to meet with a company called uh, Kentucky Highlands Investment Corporation. They're a company that invests in a 23 county area in the southeastern part of the state of Kentucky, some of the poorest counties uh, in the United States. Um, what they do is they, they secure federal dollars and reinvest them for small business and for job creation. Um, they said, uh, if you partner with us, we'll start out with about two hundred uh, to five hundred thousand uh, dollars seed capital. Um, and what we would like to do uh, is to partner also with another research institute at the University of Kentucky. Kentucky, of course, has lots of coal. Uh, we also have a nuclear power facility there, uh, which is something we, we, we did a hundred year plan for that facility. But uh, we work a lot with the Center for Applied Energy Research. So our major partners here were a uh, venture capital company and uh, the Center for Applied Energy Research, which is a state uh, uh, division. 
This is Jerry Rickett, the president and CEO of Kentucky Highlands Investment Corporation. Um, they invested some initial money in us, and over the last five years, uh, I left the project. Uh, I'm now at Syracuse, uh, but this is a project we did at Kentucky. Um, we raised about $5 million in state, federal, and local private money over, over five years to do this project. Um, one of the things that, that Kentucky Highlands invests in, and I'll show you go back, there is a lake, uh, there is a, right in the middle of, this, uh, of these yellow and green uh, counties, there's a lake called Lake Cumberland, and it had a very, very highly developed uh, houseboat industry. Uh, very highly skilled workers, and there were about 15 of these factories in 2007. At the end of 2008, there were four left. Uh, they laid off an enormous amount of workers, um, and so Kentucky Highlands in had invested in a lot of those companies, and they said, look, uh, we have a crazy project for you. Is it possible? Uh, this is the houseboat factory, the houseboat capital of the world, so-called. Uh, actually, uh, it may be true. Um, uh, these are the kind of boats they made, custom-made boats, really high-end, high, highly skilled workers, uh, two, million, two, three, four, five million dollar boats. Um, but then all of these, uh, you know, all but four of these were up for sale. Um, so this is the project they came to us with. They said, look, can you design a house using the DNA material from your $1 million, 1,000 square foot off the grid house? Can you design a house that can be built in a houseboat factory because we'd like to put those workers back to work? Can you make it built with 70% of Kentucky made products? Can you do it so that it costs $1 or a day per less to heat and cool? And can you do it so that we can get low interest loans for families to purchase this for $100,000 or less? We actually met every goal except for the dollar a day uh, it was a dollar sixty-five a day in the end, and if we use geothermal and create neighborhoods, we can get it to a dollar a day. But in any, in any case, so we started out. Uh, we uh, we tasked our comprehensive studio. All of you who do uh, accreditation will know what that is uh, in the U.S. Uh, with designing this, they started out with crazy uh, digital freaky stuff that, of course, can't be done. But it was fun. And immediately, we had to design something like this, because it had to be designed for the marketplace. Um, we designed many versions. It took one year. We came to this design. Um, as I said, it's not for us, this is not about the design. It's not about using freaky 3D animation software. It's about making a product uh, that will sell and that can get a return on investment. We came down to nine. Kentucky Highlands Investment Corporation picked two. Um, this is one of them. Uh, we also wanted them to be flat-packed because we were talking also to the U.S. military about forward deployed military housing, disaster relief housing, and other. Um, this is the factory. Uh, these are the boats. These are, this is a, 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 you know, a nice boat on the right, and uh, this is the shell of one of our first prototypes on the left. Um, this is the site of the first prototype that we built and designed. This is the placement of the project. Um, this is just, a, these are stills from a video where uh, just sort of outlining the pieces and uh, the local buy-in from uh, stone and block people, the foundation pours, labor, crane operators, and the inside uh, uh, GE, uh, we used H, all of GE HVAC stuff, we, uh, that's in Louisville, so that was in-state. Uh, Pella windows are also in the state of Kentucky, so we, we managed to get about 82% of all the products made in the state of Kentucky. Um, and this is the lovely unit uh, that we completed in the end, uh, again with all these pieces. I thought I would show more people. These are actually instructors who are involved uh, in the project. Uh, another actual student who designed the project. Uh, these are, uh, uh, this project uh, received enormous political attention in the state of Kentucky. The two tall people on either end of the student designers of those projects. Uh, I am to the left with a grin on my face because to the, to immediately to my left, is the chair of the House Appropriations Committee for the U.S. Congress, uh, uh, Hal Rogers, or otherwise known as the King of Pork. Uh, every, there are at least uh, 10 roads in a very small town called the Hi Hal Rogers Freeway, the Hal Rogers Turnpike, the Hal Rogers. In any case, Hal Rogers got very excited and interested in this because it was in his home district. Um, this is the president of the University of Kentucky next to us. This kind of project, this is a ribbon cutting with all of those people, lots of people from the Department of Energy and others from the federal government came down. Uh, this is Hal Rogers speaking. Uh, uh, and these are the partners that we, we, we got involved with this. Now, what's exciting about a project like this is that we worked with lots and lots of people. It became a very important project for our president because 
uh, he could take this project around the state to legislators and say to them, look at look what we're doing for you uh, in you know in, in every county across the state, um, and therefore we became a really politically uh, pol you know a, a tool, a useful political tool. Uh, despite that, we also uh, ran uh, two years of studios. Uh, uh, students got enormous uh, uh, opportunities to work in real industry. As a result of this, as it turns out, the houseboat company, and this is just a st uh, this is one company we work with, Stardust Industries. This is a story that just was published in August of this year. They have made a huge return. They they had, I believe, 75 employees initially. They went down to 15 when they started to work with us. They've gone back up to, I think, about 75. Not only are they, are they continuing to make the houses, but they also now have, let's say, stolen lots of ideas from, uh, from the houses, are now applying them to the boats. Um, and as a result of that, uh, they, uh, you know, they're, they're doing quite well, and they're making lots of beautiful boats uh, and selling them in Dubai and to Russian oligarchs and others around the world. So, uh, so in the end, uh, it was, uh, you know, for us, it was a very successful project. Uh, it was an education project. Uh, it was a it was a a, um, a job creation project, um, and it was a product. Uh, we we did, we've done four of the prototypes. Uh, we now have uh, uh, we don't have patents, but we have a trademark on the house product itself. We are also now designing the same units for uh, for middle and high schools, and uh, we just purchased 13 acres of land on a small river, and we'll do the first neighborhood development with these. So okay, thanks very much. Okay, so um, since we're still in place uh, since a year, so I'm not empowered like Michael to raise so much money, so, but uh, what I can tell you is that we could finance a conference, <laughs> um, and so far, this book, uh, but uh, you will hear about this later on. <coughs> so, um, thank you very much for inviting and uh, to come here and contribute to the um, to this forum. So, um, teaching um, at the Angewandte in uh, the University of Applied Arts in Vienna, um, I'm responsible for three different programs. So, the first one is um, Special Topics in Architecture Design. It's a comprehensive studio open to architecture students. The, the next one is the Aspects of Space program. It's um, uh, an architecture program for non-architecture students, open to arts and education students, and um, the newly implemented um, uh, master program of <coughs> social design, arts, is urban Asian innovation. Um, by this presentation, we'll um, more or less focus on the social design program. I just quickly go through the other programs just to illus illustrate and uh, maybe sometimes to construe. Um, sort of inherent logic pointing towards our new master program. Did it look like this? Yeah. Uh, special topic in architecture design. So um, if you look at the capital letters uh, in the short, short version, Stark. This is maybe the only sort of relationship to our um, always existing uh, studio system we have uh, on the younger one yeah. so far. <laughs> um, but this study is focusing on, uh, inter, um, on the implementation of uh, interdisciplinary research strategies and design approach. Here you can see a project which is, uh, we started with it 15 years ago. It's what called Floating City. Um, it was a research collaboration with the head organization of the German plastic industries. Um, Next one is, uh, in, in this course, is um, the Nanjing Notation Project. It was an experimental studio at Nanjing University of Arts in China, aiming for the development of strategic tools in terms of notations to describe the interrelation between space and sound, between uh, cityscape and soundscape. The students uh, got deeply involved um, with their city 
No, it was the wrong direction. Sorry. Does it work? Yeah. Um, on a very personal level, and on the other hand, on a very uh, political level, by talking to uh, citizens. And uh, what was interesting about it, the students actually figured out that it, um, the architectural intervention, in the end, meant to take position, even in the spatial, but also in a sort of a political uh, sense. The other thing is the aspect of uh, space program which is, uh, develops the theoretical and practical approach to architectural problems for non-architectural students. Um, so the idea is that we develop tools and strategies to shape the idea of space. So for example, we did um, the, the, a project we called Body Texture. This is about reconstructing uh, existing built architecture as body language, describing their spatial behavior. So students immediately uh, understand the, uh, the communication structure, the building geometry, and the structural performance of the build object. So um, as a conceptual tool, it is a three, sort of a 3D version of a blind drawing. So um, finally, social design, arts is urban innovation. So this program is, uh, concerned with the role of the art in urban environment. So art in synergy with uh, scientific method and knowledge is understood as a tool for spatial and social innovation in, a, in this really radical, uh, rapidly urbanizing world. The program um, works with ac academic as well as non-academic um, institutions aiming to integrate diverse fields of expertise while dealing with the complexity of urban system. So what is interesting, a non-academic partner, so it's not, only, um, it's not only sort of sponsoring a project, but he's really deeply involved in the project as a sort of an expert, um, really facing uh, all the questions the project is faced to. So just to give you an idea, this is the, um, the sort of official statement of our university president addressing the new master program. So we are not producing human capital. So he, the idea is that we're going to provoke change. Um, what maybe is inter interesting about it, um, as I already said yesterday, um, while working on the curriculum, uh, we just simply replaced uh, the notion of discipline by field of expertise to open up the way uh, really to, uh, to construct and formulate the faculty. So architecture, design, fine art, and theory um, are the main fields of expertise accompanying by, accompanied by a series of uh, additional experts contributing to the studio project. So last term, <clears throat> this was our first uh, studio project. We had uh, choreography, composition, music and literature as uh, accompanying ex fields of expertise. So, and in addition to this program, um, we um, had been, uh, this all had accompanied by a series of lectures and workshops. I just go quickly through it. Um, but I think what is equally important uh, is the diversity of uh, disciplinary backgrounds of the students' committee. Um, this is ranging from architecture to molecular biology or from fine arts to political sciences. So just let me introduce very briefly the, um, the project structure. So what you see project is uh, really central to, to the whole curriculum. And what you also see is that um, um, teamwork <coughs> is obligatory. So um, three students, for example, formulate a project, attracting diverse fields of expertise to contribute to the project. And the whole team uh, then starts to, to vote for a sort of leading expert who is running the project. So here, for example, you see this is with a, a project which was run by uh, sort of architectural competence and uh, the attached uh, stuff was um, 
non-academic expertise, theory, but also choreography, performing arts, and design were related to the project, while they were really centered to another project. So. Um, I just do this because we try to always ar to argue that, uh, like cut-ups, um, these sort of unexpected correlations appear by the project structure. But what maybe is interesting is that we use as a networking tool, our students uh, <coughs> prepare food um, in order to establish a network among students from all other disciplines based at our university. So, but only food, so even drinks. Um, and yeah, finally, as I started, I would like to invite you to our upcoming conference uh, in Vienna. It's called Social Design Public Action International Symposium. And what is even important, um, the publication, uh, which is a special issue by Slumlab magazine, uh, edited by Lucas Feireis. And we are really happy, and thanks to Hubert and Alfredo, um, this is um, a collaboration between ETH Zurich, Columbia New York, and uh, Applied Arts in Vienna. Okay, thank you. Good morning, uh, thank you very much for this invitation. I will tell you in five minutes a small part of the urban and architectural history of Medellin in the last uh, 20 years. This is not an urban model, this is the, just a process born in the universities, in the faculties of architecture in Medellin and done by the architects and by the governments when the architects went to the government to work there. Much of the recent history of the urban transformation has its origin in the Medellin schools of architecture. They were a laboratory where urban intervention and projects were proposed. I will explain the history in nine topics. The number one is the geographical context. 65% of land in Medellin is on hillsides. The city is crossed by the Medellin River and the water lines from the mountains take part in the formal and non-formal development of the city. The projects are located across of the river and on the mountains. The point number two, the social conditions. And planet settlements have been areas of violence and social inequality. Now the city has a big social debt to provide better conditions of life for these communities. During the 90s, civil society began to organize itself in chasing social, cultural, and political projects as a reaction to the crisis. Medellin began to implement structural changes from educational and cultural programs. Social urbanism was proposed from the universities as a tool to mitigate the problems of inequality and segregation and to connect the city throughout the social inclusion. Point number three, urban transport. The connectivity is a key aspect. This is the metro built in the 80s and 90s in Medellin and the cable car built uh, 12 years ago. As the connection to bring people to their homes on the slopes in the city. The Medellin public space has been conceived as a place for the meeting of these citizens along the river were proposed some ideas from the universities, from the Faculty of Architecture for the urban plan. New buildings and developments are located in a city with different urban and social conformations. The Orchideorama, for example, is a building located in the Botanical Garden. Another building is the Literature Park or urban space. The EPM Public Library and Pies del Scalzos Park are urban spaces for culture and meeting. 
Another place of intervention are the hillsides on the city. In marginal areas, urban spaces and buildings have been built, and the architecture and urbanism were the primary tools to integrate the separate city. As a strategy to improve the quality of life, the political administration began to build public and cultural spaces. At the local scale, Medellin looked to construct the best possible buildings in some of the city's poorest neighborhoods. This is the symbolic value of the architecture as a physical expression of new public policies. Born in the faculties of architecture for education and culture, for a better condition of life of the communities, libraries and cultural buildings are no place for integration. In the poorest neighborhoods, Medellin has new educational infrastructures, and this is the first step to enhancing the dignity of the people. Medellin has 18 new public kindergartens and 10 new schools located in the poorest neighborhoods of the city. The projects have been carried out through public competitions with the active participation of professionals and the community in the process of design and construction. Recreation and sport. For South American games, new sports arena were built or renovated, and in the neighborhoods with informal crowd, we are built uh, new spaces for sport and for recreation and for the meeting of the community. And social housing is now the Medellin's debt. The deficit in Colombia is calculated in 1.2 million units. In this context, the next step is to develop new ideas for the construction of affordable and sustainable housing, social housing. The projects have not resolved the deficit but they have contributed to improving the living conditions of the communities. In this topic, we are working right now one more time with the universities, with the Technische Universität München here in Germany, with the Pontificia Bolivariana University in Medellin, with companies of buildings, materials, and obviously with the municipality of Medellin to propose and develop new ideas. This prototype was built the last year in Medellin with the participation of enterprises with the government and with the participation of the Technische Universität München and the University Pontificia Bolivariana. And finally, the point number nine. From their problems, the society in Medellin has found a way of culture from political decisions and from ideas born in the universities for education and work, a city for all, with a lot of problems, obviously, with a lot of problems, but we work every day to overcome them, but with dreams. This is important to say, with perseverance and with hope. Five minutes, thank you so much. Thank you very much for inviting me. <coughs> uh, today I will uh, mainly show three uh, design studio works to show how we teach. Uh, I think uh, education shouldn't be a closed system. It must continue to reflect new development of human being. <coughs> Attachable education is the same. It is when responding to those changes, such as the breakthrough of science and technology, new lifestyle, new culture, new philo philosophy, uh, thinking, and so on, that it gets expanding, and especially today's information-based time. When we connect our architectural education with these changes, we find we are creating new knowledge so as to prom promote architectural forward. We, we are willing to teach young students with useful knowledge and the way to get new, new knowledge rather than those uh, outdated, obsolete dogma, which generally binds their independent thinking. This is more important in China, where every day new contradictions and changes are emerging. 
It seems that no matter it is Chinese tradition or Western tra classical, both of them couldn't solve new problems in China separately. So we uh, should explore third way creatively, which is not simply combination between China and Western. <coughs> My viewpoint of architectural education is based on uh, this recognition. <clears throat> Therefore, the teaching is related to uh, this understanding. So next, I will um, take three architectural design studio works and to uh, have some explanation. So first studio uh, we call digital diagram. This is a digital technology-based technology form funding design studio. Student, uh, we ask students to do a physical experiment which will bring about the result of complex physical phenomenon. After anal analyzing and researching the result, algorithm and computer language will be uh, chosen to uh, simulate the experiment, experimental result, and then to create the form for the design. Uh, this example is cooking rice soup. Uh, th this is the result of the design. And this is the process of how uh, cooking uh, su rice soup. And the re recording the process of rice movement. And uh, analyze uh, the character of the movement, movement. and they use a uh, regulation system and, to, uh, and a scripting uh, to uh, simulate the movement. And they use uh, the same scripting to do the design. This is the uh, result of the design. This is the process of an analyze. And this is the elevation of the design. So use new technology to create a new way to, 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 do, uh, to find a form for, for the building. This is a gallery design. And the second design studio we call the new typology Beijing. This studio asks students to find a new kind of lifestyle or life fashion in uh, new Beijing. At the beginning of the design studio, we uh, ask a student to investigate everyday life in the Beijing. And based on this uh, new life students uh, found in Beijing, uh, they uh, conceive a proper shelter for the emergent or future needs. And now they invasion. Uh, there are more and more people uh, is shopping in internet. So, uh, in fact, this uh, this kind of people really don't know uh, what they buy because they haven't haven't seen the goods at all. Therefore, a new kind of space has been uh, created only for showing commodity. Um, and. This is the uh, plan of the space for, uh, in fact, it's, uh, in the center is the showing, uh, it's the good showing space. And the small room is for internet shopping. When they saw the, the when they visit, to see the, 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 the goods and then to go to a small room to, to make uh, internet shopping. In the daytime, this small room is for internet shopping. And at the night, it will change to a uh, yin, a uh, youth hotel. So uh, it is a kind of uh, fashion show, fashion shop yin. So uh, based on a new kind of life, and they uh, create a new space for a new kind of uh, requirements in Beijing. So this is second second design studio example. The so design studio we call crucial space re rebuilding social ecosystem. Crucial space is a kind of extreme space in Chinese city as the city expanding. The 
student, uh, the studio wants students to observe this kind of space and try to find some active key points in it, and then to discover its positive potential energy by design. Uh, th this is third design studio, yeah, crucial space. In fact, this is a museum design. The building is located in an abandoned city corner. The prototype of the museum is from original living space of homeless uh, in this area. And uh, therefore, uh, put a design in a position close to a real society. This is the uh, last plan of the museum. The space form is come from the research of homeless uh, living space in, in the same area. So uh, these three examples show how we teach based on new life, real social problems, and the new uh, development in science and technology. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you all for your uh, starting comments. Um, a lot of uh, sorry. A lot of projects. I have a um, starting question, Michael. Um, you you worked intensely with the outside world, uh, builders, investors, politicians, the Department of Energy, um, you name it. Um, what is the impact of such a collaboration for the school? So can you, can you explain a little what happened after such a project with your School of Design? Hello? Yeah. You have to eat it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, is it on? Yeah, yeah it's on. Yeah, actually, it works. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, what is the impact of the school? Well, I mean, the uh, the project I showed was a um, was all student designed. Uh, it was uh, it was developed over two years, so all of the students. Uh, well, and it was also a comprehensive project for them. So so. Um, uh, Microphone. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, so yeah. So so the students actually were very involved with the design process. They did all of the design for for the for the <coughs> buildings that we're actually developing now. Um, a number of those students are also working in some of the companies afterwards uh, as consultants. A couple are working with Kentucky Highlands Investment Corporation now, uh, coordinating projects. So. Uh, so at least in that project, uh, students were designing from beginning to end. Um, in a lot of our other projects, uh, you know, similarly, students uh, are involved in the process. Um, they end up, I mean, it's part of their educational, uh, you know, experience. So they get to work with city governments. Uh, we work a lot with the state government. We work a lot with the federal government. Um, they get involved with, uh, you know, with, with raising money. They get involved with really every aspect of, you know, of the project. So, um, so yeah, everything. So it's on every level for the student, but yeah. if you look at the structure of your curriculum, the buildup of your faculty, the way you collaborate within the university, so the impact on the school's structure, organization, educational and research program, bachelor and master, I mean, yeah. this is, you do this project, but you, the, I think there's also a different side of the faculty. So I think the, the relation between both can be important. And so perhaps you can tell a little bit on that. Sure, sure. Well, you know, uh, uh, as I said, when I went to Kentucky, it was 2008, the economy crashed. Uh, we had no money. We had to find a way to raise money. Um, and, uh, and we found outside partners. And, and, you know, involving the faculty and the research capacities of the faculty were, you know, that was a really, really crucial aspect. One of the things that I was unable to do uh, in five years um, uh, was to determine the real expertise of the faculty and to create post-professional research programs out of those. Um, and I mean, the idea uh, at, at our school was uh, was to you know we have a, we have a, a four plus two program. So we have a professional master's degree, 
and what we were doing as I left was to create let's we didn't have a we don't have PhD program so what we were doing when I when I left was to create uh, post-professional research centers around certain issues for example around energy and then find outside supporters to underwrite let's say one professor then you would have post-professional students who already have a professional degree would be the first ring of research and then thesis students would, would, would create you know would follow uh, Kentucky Highlands Investment Corporation funded one as I left they they funded a professorship for hundred thousand dollars a year for uh, for a faculty person and for, for student researchers. So, so yeah. in that sense, the impact of such a studio on the organizational capacity of a school as well as on the curriculum itself and the way your faculty is organized is, yeah, is yeah, big, it, I mean, uh, in the long end. It's, yeah. it's, I mean, it's, it's really an effort to try to transform um, the kinds of design research that we do into applied research and to find and to get an economic return on that so that we can do more. Anton, you, you, you talked about the outside world becoming a team member of mm -hmm. your studios. Do you see this same kind of change for your, I mean, you said you started a year ago, yeah. so, uh, 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 but do you perceive uh, or aim or have the ambition for a same kind of change? Um, yeah, we're just in trial and error, so, um, um, but but what but what is really um, challenging is that uh, we had to turn the whole academic system upside down. So what is uh, uh, completely new in our system is that there is not one professorship and uh, assistants and students. So it is that we have uh, fields of expertise located in one project, collaborating with students. So maybe this is a, a totally different system, and it's uh, uh, in a way it's really. Uh, sort of new in, uh, in the academic world, at least uh, in, in our system. So um, as a result, when I had to infect the system, is that we had to come up with a new faculty called Arts and Society because we are not part of the ar architectural department any longer. So this is what <laughs> sort of actually changed, um, in a way, a system. Yeah. Um, but we are looking forward in, 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 in uh, this sort of collaboration with non-academic um, institutions. So we started um, right now a collaboration with the city of Vienna, uh, dealing with the city development uh, plan, uh, but not in terms of um, really inter weaving into the, the, the planning structure, but uh, in terms of uh, communicating um, the, the the planning processes to the to the citizens of Vienna. So, and, and how's your relationship now with the Faculty of Architecture? I mean, is there it can are they team members on your team? Yeah, we, uh, so I'm I'm the team I'm <laughs> I'm the team member from the architecture faculty. So, but we are not part of the architecture faculty. And does this what does the impact of your initiative have on the architecture faculty? So we are in the trial or we will find out. We will find out. <laughs> what would be your ambition? <laughs> in your words, the dream. So I think what, what, what could be interesting that we um, really figure out uh, completely new fields of architectural intervention. Yeah, so not only related to the word building and form, so but really in designing process. Alejandro. You've been working for years, uh, it seems, with the city, uh, but also with the... Uh, 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 it's on, yeah. Just close. Yes. Um, uh, with the city um, and other, um, 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 other actors in the, uh, in the development domain uh, of the city. Um, please, uh, I mean, how does it work? You're a faculty person, you're a professor, uh, you do research, you uh, work with students, and then you're out there, you do real projects. So um, tell me a little bit, I mean, you explained the whole range of issues as well as the projects, but uh, what does it mean for, for education and what does it mean for research? Yes, this is a very big team of professionals, of course. The process was born in the faculty of architecture, in the faculties of architecture in Medellin during the 80s and 90s. And uh, as a student, we made some projects across the river, on the mountains, uh, with the problems of the context in Medellin. It was the first step. Our professor in the, or professors in the 80s and 90s 
worked at the municipality in the 90s to build the first ideas. And, uh, and other professionals, new architects, were too, to the government to work there. The, it was a very, very special connection between the government and the faculties of architecture. And it is right now a consequence of that idea. The work is uh, done by the government with some points from the universities, but it's still under construction. This is very, very important to say. And in the, in the universities and in the faculties of architecture, we evaluate every day or every month or with a specific program the results of the projects. This is a continuous project. This is a continuous process. This is the situation. And, and other professionals are in the team too, engineers, humanists, scientists, and other uh, university professors, political economists. This is, a, this is a multidisciplinary team. Is there another way? We have to see that. We have to see that. This is, this I mean, is you're so convinced, um, and I can, I, I can agree, uh, but I can take also the other position. Yes, uh, of that, course. And, um, and lots of faculty or uh, uh, schools are aiming for a different type of uh, uh, research and education. So where is the t is there a tension in your schools? Is there, um, or is there no other way? It, you're so convinced, before you know, we can end the debate. It's, <laughs> it's a little bit like yesterday. There's, so where's the traction? Where do you feel the problems in your ambition? How do you develop an, to, this to a next level? What does it mean to the others in the room? Um. Yeah? Sure. Yes, this is, I, I will to, to speak one more time, one, one more thing. This is just a process from the lecture, from the read, from the interpretation of our context. This is not this is not a urban model. This is just a process for our context. This is the this you is think the so? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, our our context is very complicated. Yes. Oh, well, you, you we're in Berlin. That's a very complicated context but, too. Yeah. But but the history, the recent history in Medellin, uh, has a very deep crisis uh, with drugs problems, social problems, economical problems, and with a social debt, with a deep social debt, with uh, the people in these neighborhoods, the violence born there with the inequality of situations. This is the condition, the principal condition in Medellin. Yeah, this but is the I think it's in uh, our city. It, uh, I mean, there are more places around the world with a lot of problems, uh, although, uh, and, and all of them are, are, of course, very special or specific at the same time. Uh, but then again, you choose a different position as a university to be a partner in the development of your, uh, of your, uh, of your city. Um, the same goes with the University of Kentucky uh, uh, School of uh, Design, uh, takes a position in the development of the state, uh, taking its role almost uh, uh, as a, uh, as a uh, political or public member of the development of the state, uh, as serious as its academic challenges. So it's a, you take a double ambition in that. It's not uh, building an educational program, but building a social program with your educational and research program. So it's a, it's a different position, but you all do it. Um, so uh, we need to, I need to know uh, for the lesson, so what does it mean for uh, an institution to go that way? Uh, what should you do? Is this uh, where the tensions, what are the, the roadblocks, et cetera, et cetera? Because otherwise, you know, Xu. I would like to back to the methodology of the the design, because we are facing uh, very complicated requirements for the society. Just talk about uh, Eat it. Ale Ale Alejandro, yeah. yeah. So, um, in fact, the requirements it's a very complicated system. It's not only very pure uh, program, uh, pr problem. So we need a kind of new method to uh, solve this uh, complex and dynamic uh, pro problems in, so in social. Um, so uh, here uh, I think, uh, yeah, I won't talk my uh, topic, uh, digital design. Digital, yesterday all, there are several panelists and the audience uh, mentioned these uh, issues. In fact, uh, this is a very uh, efficient tool to solve this kind of social problem, I mean the complex uh, problems. Because um, the digital uh, technology uh, 
gave us a platform we called parametric or parametric model, uh, and so on. Whatever which words we use, but it's a uh, efficient way to is, is, uh, establish a, a system, and then uh, to uh, to fund uh, we call a abstract machine, or we uh, say a relation a regulation system, and to uh, simulate the uh, social complex system. And then to change the uh, social form, it's a com complex form, social form, to uh, architectural issue, always with the, the form. And then to, uh, to design a space or give a physical solutions to back to the uh, society. Yeah. So I think from the academic uh, aspect, we should make research this kind of way to uh, face in this kind of social complex uh, issues. Yeah. yeah. Michael. Yeah. I just want to be very clear. I think what we're doing is very different than any of that. Um, we use digital design and fabrication tools and technologies. Uh, I didn't show any of the kind of fluffy work uh, that we do like that uh, because it doesn't it doesn't have any real impact. I mean, we do. We designed shoes and crazy things like that. I mean, actually, when I first arrived, uh, some of the studios that people were doing using 3D animation software were to design uh, shoes for shoe stores. And within a couple of years, people no longer were interested in that and wanted to design uh, projects that actually had a real impact. Just be very clear, my, uh, my ambition at our school was not a social ambition. We, uh, it wasn't a social agenda. What I wanted to do at, at, this, at our college, which is a very poor college and a very poor state, uh, was to generate revenue to be able to do projects for students so that they would have experience in the world. We are also a land-grant institution, and, it was, and it's our responsibility as part of the state to give back to the state. Um, so our, a lot of our work really was literally social in that sense, but it wasn't a social agenda. It was literally, it was part of an obligation as a state, as a state institution. So um, we don't have a special design agenda, though we can make weird, freaky stuff like everybody else. Uh, we were interested in money. Uh, we were interested in partnerships. We were interested in doing real stuff in the world. Uh, and so that's, I think, I, I think that's what perhaps differentiates, uh, I mean, uh, we aren't interested in social problems, we're interested in doing things. I'm not interested in abstract machines, I'm interested in making money so that we can actually do projects. I think it's yeah, maybe a different yeah, but It's topic. the entrepreneurial approach. In, yeah. <laughs> Very good. It's the combination with the, the, the second one, you say you take your responsibility as university serious yeah. within the state. So it's the combination of those two that creates the tension for uh, your educational program. Uh, yes and no, because, because in a sense the state has uh, absolved itself of the responsibility to pay for us so that we, we, we go and we find our own money. Uh, and when we do, uh, they're very happy about that and they use us, but then we use them as well. So, uh, now this is a very, I have a very different situation, uh, you know, at Syracuse University. It's a private school. Uh, the dean who was there before me did a terrific job of engaging the city. Uh, and doing real projects there. Uh, so, but you know, I meet the mayor for the first time on Wednesday. Um, so we'll, we'll see what we'll comes see. to that. Yeah, I've only been there a month. Yeah. yeah. Um, we are also uh, very interested in cooperating with the government, uh, not because of the money, but in fact, when we establish a parametric model, we need the data from the government. Yeah, that's the uh, real uh, the data da data. Data information. Yeah. yeah, in fact, yeah, it's very important. We must have a real social re requirement. Even in the USA, needs. they're a model for actually. Yeah. Yeah. We export our data our technology to Russia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> information. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so there's a no. <laughs> nah. Well, a lot of publicity. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. But. There's always an interest. So you go for the money, you go for the data. Anton, where do you go for? Um, I think what is maybe different is that our term social design uh, means design with uh, real social impact. 
And so what, what you can see on the other headline, it's called Arts as Urban Innovation. So I think what is crucial is that uh, you, you have to convince the tension, you, you mentioned the tensions uh, in, in the faculty, so you have to convince the architect faculty that you do things like this, and you have to convince the art faculty that you could do things like this, but nobody, nobody both of them, would trust you. So this is the academic world, but either uh, if you go out, uh, outside to the, to the real world, so what we call, in terms of Viktor Papanek, we call our design, design for the real world. So the idea is, um, I just give you, give you a small example. So we had an interesting discussion with, um, with the International Development Bank, with, um, um, and the idea was they were asking, what does it mean? Art as urban innovation. What, 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 what could you do for you, or what could you do for us? Yeah, because we are also trying to uh, raise money for, for sure. So um, the idea was that um, the, the development banks um, mainly works on um, infrastructural projects, and the idea was that if there is a uh, infrastructural problem in terms of traffic, traffic, mobility, and going, things like going this they always ask traffic engineering. So there's always a technical solution. And our idea was that we actually get another perspective, turn it the other way around and say, okay, why don't you talk to choreographers? They have a lot of ideas about movement. And this will really <coughs> change the perspective. And we will end up not only with a technical solution and, okay, I was afraid they're going to kick me out, but uh, in the end of the day, they said, Anton, maybe you're right. So, we hopefully. <laughs> you're working on it. Yeah. So, the, um, as an entrepreneur uh, uh, within a university, um, th how does it work, Michael? You go to, you come from Los Angeles, you go to Lexington, and you say, I'm going to start a business. And, <laughs> Well, look, Tell us. Uh, we should, you know, Eat I'll, the microphone. I'll also be, be clear that, uh, you know, it's, um, we are the only school of architecture, we were the only school of architecture in the state of Kentucky. So um, we had opportunities there uh, by virtue of that that we wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, you know, when you're in a small state like that, uh, you, you know the governor, you know, you're on panels, you're on every commission of every conceivable kind. So you're asked to do a lot of things that you wouldn't normally be asked uh, because there's no other expertise. You were actually on one of our, you know, you were part of this Mayor's Institute for City Design that, that, that we did. Um, and one of the things that we were planning to do after we did the national one was to establish one for the state because you have, uh, you know, there is an enormous lack of knowledge um, at the city and county level for how to deal, you know, for how to do the most basic kind of design projects. Um, but, but, but the way you do it, you know, is uh, people come to you and then you, you go back to them and, um, and you, you know, you, you do deals, basically. I mean, my, my, I, I, my job really, I considered my job was, uh, was really to do deals for my faculty, to get the money to do the projects that they needed to do uh, so that students could get experience uh, and so that they could get jobs when they left. Um, I mean, that's, that's what I was paid to do. Yeah, but there was, al um, which is true, but there was also an, um, a, an agenda for the faculty behind. So the, sure. the, the money was necessary, but it drove the deal. And in the end, the faculty was involved in uh, urban development, uh, 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 river uh, uh, um, uh, reconstruction uh, processes uh, uh, along the state, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you drove the content through the money or the other way around. That's was, right. Yeah. That's, yeah. Right. Okay. That's right. How does it work, uh, Medellin? Uh, it's a little different city than uh, Lexington, of course. But what's the role of the, uh, the university in, in, uh, in such a huge uh, context? Uh, do you have to compete with other faculties? Is there... Um, uh, a, di a different landscape of uh, uh, academia? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have in Medellin, we have five faculties of architecture. Two faculties of architecture in Medellin are uh, 70, 60 years old, and the, the another three faculties are, are very young faculties. But uh, between the five faculties, we are going for the knowledge. This is our business, the knowledge. And we are going to produce new knowledge uh, between another universities and uh, with the industries 
to get new knowledge and uh, make uh, better the social conditions of the city. This is clear for us. This is our context. We can go for the knowledge, and we have to produce new knowledge to work with the people, with the industry, and with the government. Uh, but do you see the other uh, faculty do this, take the same approach, or you uh, you're alone uh, in the in the world? No, uh, in Medellin, of Everybody course. Everybody does. Uh, yes, uh, this okay. is this is the this is the object. This is the model. Yes, yeah. and and another models for sure for sure uh, are in another countries, but uh, this is just a process. This is not an only one model. This is just. And is a it process. the money? Is money driving this, uh, or is it the, your your conviction, your ideology as a faculty that you have to build a better Medellin? Yes. Yes, in depends of our context, yes. No, no, yes on what? Yes on the money or on the ideology or on both? The money is not our first problem. No? No, no, no. Wow. The problem of the education is the knowledge. Okay, so, see, there's no concern for money. There's a lot of concern in the city, and you have four faculty collaborations. So you work with the other universities when you do this project. So politics and design or the, the, the policy development and the educational program or the research program actually collide. Yes, and, uh, and we work, of course, with the industries and with the government together, but the industries have the How do you keep your, your, uh, your position? I mean, um, if you're part of the government, well, I can tell, it's scary. Uh, hey, you, you, Mr. Gideon didn't trust us, so... The, it, does the same now go if you're such a coherent partner of uh, a, a policy development, rules and regulation? Are you, you've, you stepped across the side? Yes, we, we have borders, of course, in, uh, but we have a team. In the last 20 years, we made a team in the city. Yeah, but who's the boss, the mayor or you? The mayor, of course, wow. the government, the social condition. <laughs> yes. Okay. yes. Michael, mm -hmm. you're the boss. Yes. Okay. Anton, how do you do this when you work with industry? your team members, do you set the agenda or your school or the students or in this collaboration? Are you um, equal or can yep. they, you know, can they join the team but? Um, for example, the, the, the project I showed at the very beginning, which was 15 years ago, um, we actually had the chance to really define the agenda uh, to work with the industry. Um, and this was our first step. Otherwise, I think we never ever would step uh, would have ever done this sort of step, so because then it, it turned, it will immediately turn into something else. So the idea was when the what would that be hmm? something else? Now, uh, for uh, just as a simple example, so the idea of the of the industry was that we come up with the uh, much more better substitute for every material you could use plastics. So this was the idea why they actually uh, asked us to do that. Um, so they were in for the money. Yeah, but the idea, then we turned it around and said, okay, but it doesn't make any sense, so we have to look, uh, so we are living on a plastic planet, let's do plastic cities. And so we just pushed, uh, pushed in a totally different direction, and what was the idea that you also could implement a sort of uh, critique on the system itself. So they didn't never expect that, so, and... Um, how can you trust the data, if that's the driver? So how do you do that? And, and I mean, it's it's not a critique, but it's a uh, it's a question because we have this discussion in Europe, and it's you know it's going as many ways as there are states uh, and, uh, or uh, uh, nations. Um, uh, we have this discussion in the U.S., and it only goes uh, uh, across the board. So, uh, how do you do that in China? Uh, uh, for the uh, academic research. Yeah, we uh, only do a few uh, academic research topic. But of course, uh, sometimes there is a special budget from the government. They ask the university to do several important research topic. Yeah, we got the money um, support, and also we must get the data, the, the information from the government. So from the academic research, we uh, specialize in uh, the, the uh, in fact, we use the digital technology to establish a model, model, a parametric model to test the, the, the yeah, to test the, the efficient of the, the, the model, uh, which will be used to solve the uh, problem in the society. Yeah. So from this uh, 
point of view. Uh, from the uh, university, we only uh, do this kind of uh, research, but uh, we must uh, get the support from the government, from the information, and the, of course the money. Yeah. So what did they get back from you? Uh, in fact, we will give the parametric model to them. Yeah, it, it's so kind the of model you develop, you give back. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We call uh, right now. You know, uh, there is a name the BIM, building information. Yeah. But this not the building beam, not the building information model, but it's a CIM, city information model. So we uh, establish such as a square of the zoo in the in the city. We establish a CIM for them. So they could use this model to uh, test the, uh, the all um, changes in this area and to development, uh, develop yeah, that development, and, development. and to control the city development and so on. Yeah, such a such kind of, yeah. You developed it? Uh, wow. Yes, we have a group of people yeah, to okay. do this kind okay. of things for so the city. So in that sense, there's this collaboration again where you exchange and you get in return the funding for your projects. Yeah. Yes, yeah. of course so they could. Yeah, you're all CEOs, money. yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's, an, it's a, a different take on academia. Um, you started a year ago, where will it go? I mean, you have, you, you explained three projects, yeah, you're working on, uh, all a little different, but with the same underlying approach of, on the organization. Uh, well, organization always comes last, so it's only a tool to get something done. Uh, so where would it go? Are you, um, uh, uh, a, a development machine or uh, is there money in the bank after uh, two years you're going to separate yourself from the rest of the university or be a more integrative part is that is it totally focused on the research or on on education where she where she where are you going um i think there will be both lacks so the, the one will be the the, the educational um, lack and the other one will be between we try to implement a PJ program in terms of research. Okay. And um, yeah, so this is, but, but uh, answering your question, um, in terms of will it be integrated in the faculty, um, on, on the university, yeah, for sure. So I think yeah. this could, this, uh, this, sorry? Yeah, it's better, oh. eat it. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 It's not, not so tasty, sorry, no, but. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's breakfast. Yeah, you mean I missed my breakfast, so, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> um, no, I think, uh, I think this could be uh, also a chance, uh, a chance and, um, and, and in this for sure a challenge for the university itself. Okay. Uh, Alejandro, um, you've been doing this for quite a while. What's the development? Do you see a next step or is it a continuous, uh, uh, a pro you're there and it's working and you're okay with it? Or uh, are you aiming for something else? Yes, the next step uh, is the social dwelling in Medellin. It's continue the process that began 20 years ago. This is the next step, the social dwell, uh, dwelling as, as a topic. But the another steps are the revision of the results of this work. The another step is the revision of the production of Kunoglish for the university and for our students. The next step is to revision for um, future collaborations with the industry, with the government, and with the university. This is the situation. We have to maintain a level of uh, um, production of new knowledge to um, make better our research groups, to um, transform um, a little parts of our city, and to educate our next generations of architects. Yeah, this is our to, next ma step. to make it more concrete, I mean, the issues I understand, but for the way you organize yourself or position yourself as a faculty, <laughs> Uh, do you want to change something on that position in the collaboration, or is it okay? I mean, it's there. Uh. Now, as a topic, as a topic, the next step definitely is the social dwelling. This yeah, is but the, as this an the the, in your role as a university, you will take the same position in this topical approach. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And Sue, you're there now. Is the date you got all the data in the house to develop uh, Beijing? Um, what's the what's the next? You mean the house developed in the... Uh, no, I don't know. So I, I don't know Beijing that well, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think the main problem in Beijing uh, is uh, build, uh, build a house for, for the 
common people for the people from very poor uh, countries. Very poor side. or middle class? Uh, I think the middle class is not important today in China, but the, the most important is for the peasants, uh, that for, for the farmer, for uh, the people who come from the uh, and suburban. Are, are they uh, yeah. government funded housing or? Sure, yeah, yeah? they have a, a ambitious uh, uh. Yeah, pro uh, project, a lot so of that project. Will and for you? Invest. Yeah. yeah, we uh, make research on this kind of uh, development and try to, uh, well, you know, uh, generally they uh, build this kind of uh, housing in a modern, uh, I mean, a mo modern, modern way that everything is, uh, the building is the same and the uh, display of the mass plan is similar, this kind of modern way. But uh, in fact, um, we should find uh, some other ways and to, uh, especially we make a research on a topic of uh, we call natural uh, growth, yeah, to that the, uh, the area grows um, naturally to uh, the bo use a bottom up, uh, bottom up ways to let the residential growth itself uh, so become a very organ uh, city form, become, uh, yeah, efficient. Yeah. Michael, you left uh, uh, the College of Design. Mm. Um, how about your successor there? I mean, we can talk about Syracuse, but uh, <laughs> you, you left the business behind without a successor. Yeah. Look, I mean, every every school is different. Obviously, when 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 I went there, there were there were opportunities that we as a college took. Uh, there was a very favorable, you know, political climate with the mayor as a new, newly elected mayor in the city of Lexington. The same was true in Louisville. Um, you know, situations change. Uh, I, 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 I stay in touch a little bit with the, with the municipalities. I mean, we, I continue to work a little bit with the, with the mayors in Louisville and in Lexington. Um, I, I'm not sure how much of this, you know, they will continue exactly. I know the work with Kentucky Highlands, we left, uh, we left it so that the funding is still there. Uh, we got a three-year deal for a for this professorship, you know, for this hundred thousand dollar a year professorship, which is a lot in the state yeah. of Kentucky, yeah. um, but so so a lot of that will go yeah. on. A lot of that will go I mean, on. Suppose that there's a successor of you in this, in, in the audience. You never know. Um, um, what would he or she find on his or her desk from you? The last sentence. Wow, <laughs> not very much. Not very much. No, okay. no. no. Okay. No. I want to open it up to the uh, audience because I, I need to know your reactions and there's a lot of hands, so that's good. Um, Dietmar. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. There you go. Okay, you thank you. Uh, yes, I eat your microphone. Yeah, stand and say your name, but for you, that's everybody knows who you are. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working a lot uh, here at the NCB with non-academic non uh, partners, uh, also at several universities. And uh, for me, I would like to know from you, um, is there constant information exchange when you work with uh, academic partners, or is it just like you take the brief and you present? Um, is there Ooh. a real collaboration? I mean, for example, Michael, um, okay. is there a real collaboration, or you just uh, got the message and then you present three months later? No, no, no. I mean, with, uh, with, with just for example, with the project that I showed, um, uh, the company president uh, is interested in um, in sustainability and is, is interested in that kind of housing development. Um, they came to us. Uh, we made a counter proposal. Uh, we brought in a number of partners, and you know what, what I showed is the result of a really a four or five year process. Um, we got we had some initial investment from them. We brought in other partners. Um, I, I I routinely presented to their to the company's board of directors work that we were doing. So you know you, you, it's a, it's a it's a relationship. Um, uh, one of the one of the tricky things for for us as a as a as a, as a state university is um, you know trying to find ways to circumvent the university's means of capturing taxes. Uh, I mean, this sounds really uh, n not important, but it's enormously important. For example, um, uh, with this $100,000 a year professorship, um, I, if, the, if, the, if the company would give me this as a gift, I can take it and get, I get uh, the pure $100,000 a year. 
If it's considered a research project, then my university captures 50% in indirect costs, which means I get $50,000 a year. So one of the things that we had to do was come up with clever categories that circumvented the university processes so that we didn't lose the 50% so that my professors would get the $100,000 a year. So we came up with new, new categories, new, new, new research categories, new research professor categories so that we got, we got the entire, I mean, what, what the, the problem, and people who deal with this know this, the problem with the gift uh, is, um, uh, is there, there's a quid pro quo, I mean, there is something they're paying for directly, um, but if it gets, but if the, if the deliverable is too clear, it becomes a research project, and then, and then you, and then you lose the 50%. So, um, so, so it's a, you know, it's a, it's a kind of an evolutionary process, and you learn how to deal with these, different entities over time. Some are public, some yeah. are private. Toshi. I guess I have a question to the, I, I do, oh, yeah. okay, sorry. Um, I have a question regarding sort of differences between project and research. In a way, uh, actually, you ask, so who is the boss? Right, and then the research part actually, it's kind of clear that uh, you have your own research agenda and make a decision or set up the question itself. But almost like when it is a project, the question is set by somebody else, and most of the time that you're asked to provide the solution to it. And the, the, then the, the issue here, doing this type of collaborative project in a university setting, is again who is initiating and who actually or how and also how to prevent that you become like some kind of a hired consultant to, buy, to the client. And I'm just curious how you kind of control that. Who? Maybe to you guys. I have a lot of experience. In fact, it's a, a very sad experiment. Generally, the uh, client will uh, have their own uh, special requirements for the project. Yeah, it's different from the research. But if you follow the uh, clients, uh, you you will you you can do nothing. Yeah. In fact, uh, at at finally the the client will uh, will will uh, will say uh, this is not suitable for me. So my experience from uh, the real project, we, we should at the beginning have our uh, concept, our yeah, strong um, uh, suggestions to the client, because um, they are not the uh, expert or they are not the yeah the, the the planner or the designer. They don't know the regulation of the design. They don't know the code of the uh, city requirements and so on. But we know, yeah. So at the beginning, we must have a very strong suggestions to the uh, clients, and then to persuade to accept our concept. Yeah, that's my experience. <laughs> that's it. It's it. Yeah. yeah, you can. Yeah, no, no. Before you know it, I do it all. <laughs> no, no. no I, I think the, the the question is like, I don't know, like your case that the, there's a kind of a, already the kind of sets of requirement presented from the client. And you have a choice to accept that or you question itself already, so push it back, right? And uh, if there's a money involved and if there's a kind of a project you agree on, and then you will be set under certain kind of a situation, then how you actually sort of uh, be able to sustain the power to push it back and say, this is maybe doesn't work to do. In, in the, in the case of this <laughs> Don't listen yet. Don't listen yet. Uh, no, it's it's of course uh, it's of course uh, an issue. It's a it's a problem. In in our case with this particular company, um, um, they did set out these. Uh, they weren't really requirements. They were they were proposals. As it turns out, these proposals accorded precisely with the kind of agenda that we had for our comprehensive studio. So, so you know, for us it was a matter of trying to, to line up our own interest uh, with things that, uh, that they were hoping to, to accomplish, you know, in, in, in their research. I mean, actually, in the end, this, the company that was helping to underwrite this is Kentucky Highlands Investment Corporation. 
um, they didn't they didn't really they didn't have deliverables that they really really wanted to I mean they, they were hoping we could hit these targets but in fact the targets they knew if we hit the targets um, and we were successful in developing a product line that we could in fact help the houseboat industry and they had invested in the houseboat industry so indirectly we were helping um, companies that they had invested in but they also knew that um, you know that in the state of Kentucky uh, uh, funding a university research project also um, enhance their own credibility so it's a it was a you know it's a it's a real back and forth it is it's tricky a, though you're right there's a difference between being a consultant and being part of a collaboration and a role of academia so and and I mean a consultant is a, it oh, it's, yeah, well I don't know if it's bad or good because we'll leave it in the middle but being part of a collaboration you're aiming together for something while in a consultant position there's a lot of dependency and uh, uh, as a as a research school or a design school there's a lot of indep independency so the collaboration actually is a model where you do both um, would you consider yourself as a consulting uh, firms no no if uh we, at least in the forum that I discussed this, we, we were not a consulting firm. This was, uh, these were true, true collaborations. I would be happy, however, to be a consulting firm. That's, that's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 that's, a, that's actually what the post-professional right. degree programs would do. I mean, one of the, one of the, one of the great advantages of a, of a post-professional degree program is that you're, you, you operate really outside the purview of accreditation. Uh, you can set up special programs that do special projects and the people who are running them are professors that have expertise in an area and the students who are working in those typically already have a professional degree by definition it's post-professional so um, so I, I think I think those kind of programs are, uh, are are very different than the kind of studios that we were running with this because this was after all a comprehensive studio project where we had to check boxes off for accreditation and as it turned out this was a perfect marriage of, uh, of, 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 of being funded uh, to, to check boxes off for our students to be able to get an accredited degree. And then they had opportunity actually afterwards uh, to, to even to, you know, to work for some of these companies. Very clear. This, this, this gentleman has had his hand up for about an hour I, I, back An hour. Back. Even, oh, before, yeah. uh, even yeah. before. Before uh, anyone else. Yeah. But there's a mic over there, wasn't there? May I, may yeah. I trust it? I have just a mic, one, I also have a question. Yeah. One, Anton, and then... No, I just, just want to add one comment. To, to yeah. no, I, I, I'm fine. Two I'm fine. I don't, we, I don't want to eat two, so one is enough. Uh, so yeah. maybe, as, as a, um, maybe you could try the Viennese model. So um, I, I try to... I try to <laughs> <laughs> in terms of contracts. Yeah. So what, what we do is uh, we, uh, the thing we do, uh, really when the oath, everything is finished, we do the contract. So uh, then, finally, we decide which role we played in the game. Oh wow! That's a scary partner you are. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I go into the public. So now I don't trust you anymore as a collaborative partner. Yeah. Yeah. It works, it works for you. Yeah. Okay. Who? Ah. Yeah. So Please name and ra raise. Yeah. We always we forget on this in this end that there's another room over here. Hi, it's Sarah over here. No, I, I a lot think of people that, here. No, I'm not going to go any further. Yeah. Um, well, so, so Eat I it. have to say that 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 uh, sorry uh, that that today you Michael um, posed design as being fiscally irrespons irresponsible. Uh, yesterday, Elena essentially posed design as being ethically irresponsible. I find this actually a little disturbing, I have to say. I don't, I don't agree with you, Michael, that the message is that design is uh, fussy or fluffy or uh, out of this world. Uh, I think that there's a very risky territory. And I, I know, I, I know that the, the difficulties that you faced with that project, but I don't think that the message of reality has to be so utterly banal is a good message for the students or for the state of Kentucky. Okay. I, I, well, I, think, I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I think it's very easy t 
to say that as the dean of Rice University, where you actually have uh, lots of money and lots of opportunity uh, to do things with. Uh, though you know, uh, well, you, you know, you were, uh, Sarah, Sarah knows, and we've had this discussion before, uh, but and, wait, 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 wait. And a, a backstory, having taught at the University having taught of Kentucky, at Kentucky that's and right. having done a project that was funded by the state of Kentucky right. and had design as part of it for that's the right. Center, that's right. I think you want to be a little careful there. Oh, I, I don't want to be careful at all about that. Uh, 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 but look, let's, let's, let's say it like this, that uh, what, when I was suggesting about fluffiness, uh, was that the project that we were developing, uh, we started out with a lot of really crazy, exciting things. We knew we had to move that project to, uh, ultimately, to a commercial product at the end of the day. And that was a product that, uh, that operated under a lot of constraints, a lot of constraints that would not fit into the original kind of research that we did. So, so I, don't, I, I wouldn't, I mean, if, if I were the students, I would take offense at your comments about it being banal. It is banal only in so far as it's not a high design project. It is a project that will be commercially viable. It's a project that will, that will, you know, that, that will actually get a return, and it's a project that will have an impact on the school and on the state. Yeah, the design, there, the yeah. design is banal. Huh. Micro, and say your name first. Micro, and then say your name first. I think the fluffy people are uh, answering me. the call. <laughs> No, but it, it, is, it is really important to realize that if you go to either Bogota or Medellin, it is extremely humbling for all of us. And to say weird and fluffy forms when you go to Latin America where governments, people, the new middle class have come together and have made extremely beautiful architecture where little tiny kids give you tours through their library because they're so proud of it and you essentially see standing there that it really transforms a whole neighborhood. We actually, I was in the jury for the Architecture Biennale where we gave that school in Medellin the first prize. It's on top of the hill and absolutely the worst slumps and I've been in Brazil and everywhere, the worst slumps I've ever seen. Those people gave tours through the schools, kids got food every day, we cannot talk like weird fluffy forms when we don't know what these weird fluffy forms, which is called architecture, and the most advanced architecture, by the way, guys, on the level of Sharon, we, who made a beautiful philharmonie here, that level of architecture is being built there for the poorest of the poorest. And they enjoy it every day, and they get amazing education, they get food, and so I think this whole discussion gets too stupid for all of us. We should really be ashamed. This is not a small thing what's being done there. And this is not just Colombia. This is Brazil, this is Chile, this is Argentina. And these people have a high level of education and doing amazing stuff for education of architects, of cities, and of students. And I think we should not undervalue that. I, so I, let's I, applause for we, that. I have, to, I have to respond to you because, yeah. because uh, because when I was talking about fluffy forums, I certainly was not talking about Medellin. I was actually talking about the projects that you showed yesterday. So uh, I, I, don't, I don't think that there's anything fluffy about the projects that, that they developed at all. Uh, and, and I also don't need to take humble pie from you about, the, about, the, you know, about Colombia or about the third world. I mean, when you develop and do real projects, we can have a conversation, but you haven't done that with the school yet. So when you do that, we'll have a conversation. OK. Martha. I, I, okay. yeah, Martha. Yeah. I, I really uh, appreciate, Hank, that you tried to get to the essence and bring out the black and white and things. However, I, I, it's not everything is black and white. And I want, my question is for you. Um, I, heard your, I heard your discourse about helping the city, et cetera. And I can understand coming from your university, which is a Catholic university, that that may be part of your mission as well, service to the community, as in many institutions. But I also think that maybe there's a part, it's not the money you're after, maybe it's uh, research results as part of it, but could you also talk about power? Because I think that in Medellin, it's a city that has been transformed. It's a city that has become very important as, a, as an example, as with good publicity, good information. And so to be part of the winning horse 
is also probably a benefit that you get from that. So as much as I have great respect for what your university is doing, I think there's a little bit more that you haven't told us. Political. So are you sharing in political power because of your actions? Are you sharing in gained prestige around the world because of your actions? And those are things that, that you didn't mention, but I wish you would address. Okay, Marta, this is not a religious problem. The university is Catholic, but this is not a religious problem. This is a social problem in our city. And in this way, the university is working with the architects and with the government. This is the first answer. The second one, the prestige, the money, and other things are maybe compliments to the work in the university. But um, the answer to the question is how to do a better condition of the life for these communities. This is our... Yes. A hundred percent never, never. Uh, we are producing knowledge for us to, for this process, we produce knowledge for our university. And we use the, this knowledge for uh, master programs, for our bachelor programs, for, for, our, for our institution. This is, this is the situation. There are a lot of topics derivated for the, the facts, but, uh, but this is a, 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 a lot of situations with this activity. It's, it's not only this altruistic position, of course. Okay, there's no time for one more question, but we can do, yeah, Hans Jürgen. Yeah, there's, there's a whole lineup here. Can I go? Yeah, okay, who's first? Name and... Luis, Rico Gutierrez, um, I want to change a little bit the topic. Um, in all the partnerships in these uh, external relationships that we've been talking about, uh, there are triangles between academia, uh, industry, and uh, the community as a beneficiary. It's a little bit of a menage a trois. Uh, and, uh, but the person that is, uh, the group that is missing, and I've only heard professions, architects, once. So, what are the practitioners? You know, do they have to play a role in these things? Uh, or are we competing with them and that's why they were not mentioned and we need the money just like them and we're competing okay. in free market? Yeah. Well, we're Michael, actually, take the mic. We're, we're not allowed, in fact, to compete with, uh, with architects. And if, I mean, I showed a couple of the professors, for example, uh, who led these projects, who actually, who have offices. Uh, so, so they are professional architects, but they're professors uh, in our school. No, we're, we're, we're on projects like this, we're not, uh, we're, we're not allowed to compete, no. So, so we can't do that. In Colombia, for example, um, are they not, um, do you have a sophisticated group of practitioners that could also do this, or is it that we don't trust them? I mean, and, and, and we know better, and that's why we have to do it ourselves. Where are the practitioners? Yeah. Where's the offices? I, I mean, you're all involved with these, aren't you? Are they? Or is it only the university? No, uh, the, the main ideas are developed for the, from the university in the, in the 80s and 90s, but the projects are done by the government. We are not involved directly in the development of the projects. The projects are done by the architects through public competitions. This is important to result. No, I, I, I think I, 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 think I got... Because there's okay, more. There's yeah. more time. Yeah. Yeah. Next. Uh, um, hi. Come with microphone here, well, we've been in the same situation the whole time, so I guess it's, it's a bit of um, you haven't heard primary, anything. primary, secondary here. So I'll stand... Uh, and now you're I'll, gonna I'm going to stand on the line, yeah. okay. actually. Yeah. Uh, there yeah. we go. Very good. Um, to, so I'm one of the companies which many of you haven't approached. Uh, with Tsinghua, we have a, a long-standing relationship. We have 32 sort of relationships with universities around the world, and I don't think there's maybe one or two which are schools of architecture. And it's very interesting to me... To why? Why is that? I, well, that's what I'm just no, kind no, of curious. No, but ask yourself. Yeah. No, I, so you. I... You can Do you really want me to answer that? Yeah. So, um, and there's, there's two or three different reasons that, that might be. One is it just haven't asked, uh, and maybe you guys have, and, and I don't know about it. But um, and the second is very often the, the questions that are being asked at schools are very often irrelevant to the execution of the built environment. 
except for I think Michael, your project from from Kentucky was fantastic. Um, I thought that was really really great. And the other part is the time frames. Very often in practice, our time frames don't necessarily respect a semester. And I think this is one of the greater challenges that we have with the projects, which very often are proposed to us. And you say, well. Let's start, and six months from now, we might have something. And so we have to really think together collaboratively, and this is why I love this idea of collaboration, of what are some of the themes which would be contextually appropriate. And so this is sort of an open offer, and I, um, and I hope I'm deluged with uh, responses to um, just kind of figure out how we can collaborate on some themes which are contextually ap appropriate and semesterly appropriate. Okay. So we have an offer here. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, one last question. Burning. Yeah, could, can I make one quick oh. No, I have to say this. I, I, I don't remember uh, exactly what, uh, <laughs> what, what, what your comment was about, uh, yes, Sarah, about yesterday. Could you just repeat that again so I can respond? Because I, 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 I must, I, I feel I must. It was... We are corrupting architecture somehow. Uh, tell me how no, was, I have. It, it was. It was yeah. the. I th we're getting the time cut off. The. It was the. The issue. It was especially in Elena's presentation. I don't know where you are, Elena. Uh, the. The positing of design as being somewhat ethically irresponsible. She posited that. Um, that was the interpretation. Okay. And I what did I posit? Um, as design being fiscally ir irresponsible. Uh, how. I, how so? But, Exactly. It's about the design it's no, 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 no. That's, that's, that's not. That's not what I said. I said the design object at the end of the day was not the important. What was f part of the project? What was important? You said you interested in design. I said. Actually. I never said we are. We are a college of design. We are certainly <laughs> interested in design. Okay. We almost clarified that. Then there's the last question. I won the. I won the last question. That was yeah. a nice. Yes. Exactly the right moment. That interested. Now I had a last question. Finishing with a preposition. <laughs> Okay, Tom, here you go. Say uh, your name. Actually, the question is for you, Say Hank. Your name. Uh, my name is Tom Maton. The question okay. is for you, Hank, because you are the, the expert in politics. Yeah. And I'm wondering if this debate is not too much in a sort of inside architectural technological uh, belief that we living in a capitalist system. We have a lot of people who are healthier than ever. And you see universities who go for the winner side, uh, gaining money, and then being proud of building uh, ships for Russian millionaires in the end. And you see another university, well, that's very black and white, of course. And wow. the other university who are having... Yeah. yeah, he hopes it was true. Well, he, he just explained me that in the end he make a uh, help a factory which was happy that they can build new yachts for uh, millionaires in okay, Russia. Okay. That's how so I... Ex yeah. Yeah. And then we have another university who is uh, very much on the social side. He was the only one who says, I don't care for money. And as we know that all the capitalist rich people causes poor people more than ever as well in the world. So we are in a system having more healthy, wealthy people, having more poor people and universities going for the one side and the other side. Isn't there something wrong with the system? Shouldn't they compete each other and fight each other away from this uh, they do. podium? The question for you is, can you make this emotional thing into an intelligent question for the panel. <laughs> well, now my... That's, thank you very much. Yeah. This is not the last question. This is the most terrible time. I could say, let's go for lunch, but... Uh, um, you started off with the political part, and I think uh, 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 part of the collaboration, and that's why uh, perhaps I was asked to moderate this panel is that uh, forcing politics into this collaboration is is the hardest thing to do because they're not interested uh, uh, in the end or in the beginning uh, then again it can work there are mayors like Jim Gray or uh, uh, and from a different scale uh, if you t if you talk to uh, Chris Christie or Mayor Bloomberg uh, of course they're not interested in these collaborations as long as it benefits their own agenda. But in the end, their agenda is very much able to be tweaked and changed. Uh, so driving politics into this collaboration actually also drives a lot of uh, competition uh, and uh, adds to the, 
to the value of the research agenda. But it's a very complex thing to do. Um, I'm happy to be able to have done some and seen a lot of failure in that as well. Uh, so we, we try and try over and over again. I cannot um, recall your emotional approach into a question to these guys. Um, the only thing I could ask him, Michael, still be happy to answer it. Michael will still be happy to answer it. <laughs> is that um, there is like a, m in the, the, the reaction of um, some of the questions from the audience, there's this moral approach, which almost seemed like these were immoral guys. And they're not. So um, this tension between, and Martha said, Hank, you make it very black and white. Uh, well, perhaps it's true, and that's what politics is all about. But on the other hand, there's no Im immo uh, immorality, uh, but there's uh, opportunity, entrepreneurship, and a real care for design and research with all of you four. So perhaps it weakens the whole discussion, but one of you can respond. Oh, actually, you'll get the res the, uh, uh, your last uh, I, I, I comment. Would, I, I want to respond just to, just to the... To I, the I would respond. I was thinking... Sorry, uh, I would respond to the to again to to the suggestion that I that we're not interested that I'm not interested in design. That's not the case. Um, if you follow the solar decathlon competition, there are very few spectacular designs that are generated from those competitions. What is generated is a body of design knowledge and research. And so our problem, our interest was to convert that pure research problem, which was a million dollar investment, into something that would have an impact on a very poor state like Kentucky. I, we live in, I, live in a, I lived in a very poor state. We did not have an Ivy League endowment. We needed to find ways to underwrite projects so that students could get experience, and we needed to find a way to generate money for the college. And so we found investors. We don't have obscenely wealthy donors, or we didn't in the state of Kentucky, Mr. like Ford. their sit at Princeton, like their sit at Rice, like their sit at Penn. So uh, it's ironic and interesting that the poor state university gets accused of being money-grubbing capitalists because they try to find <laughs> okay. money for their Thank students. You. Any last comments? No. We stop. It will raise more debates and we're not allowed to. We, we go lunch. Thank you all. Thanks, panelists.